Hello, one more time. Let's compare between intravascular hemolysis and extravascular hemolysis. We have discussed them separately in the previous video. Today, it's a comparison. Again, there is your erythropoiesis. Here are the RBCs. Mean corpuscular volume determines is the anemia microcytic, normocytic, or macrocytic. Here is your normocytic anemia, acute blood loss, underproduction or overdestruction or hemolysis. Reticulocyte index is more than 2.5, i.e. there is reticulocytosis. From the cause standpoint, it's either intrinsic or extrinsic. So, causes, intrinsic or extrinsic, mechanisms, intravascular or extravascular. There are other classifications such as inherited versus acquired, acute versus chronic, etc. So mechanisms of hemolysis are intravascular or extravascular, discussed in the previous video. In brief, extravascular, the spleen or any reticular endothelial organ is destroying your red blood cells. In the intravascular hemolysis, the hemolysis is occurring inside of the blood vessel due to maybe complement, enzyme deficiency, macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia or microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. The song, sing with me, D-I-C-T-T-P-H-U-S, help me, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Here is the process of your extravascular hemolysis. Please go to my video on extravascular hemolysis to get some details. And here is the intravascular hemolysis. Again, for details, watch my video on intravascular hemolysis. What's unique here is hemoglobin urea and hemosiderinuria. Both of them are excreted in the urine. Now let's talk clinically. What's the difference between intravascular or extravascular? Usually they are the same. Really? Yep. All signs of symptom and symptoms of anemia. Pale, tired, uh, extreme fatigue, um, dizziness, shortness of breath, dyspnea on exertion, also exercise intolerance. Signs will include stuff like murmur, pale conjunctiva, etc. But here also jaundice. Which type of jaundice? Unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. A hemolytic jaundice. A prehepatic jaundice. And of course, unconjugated bilirubin. There is hemolytic jaundice. You will have urine discoloration, also known as Coca-Cola-like urine. Splenomegaly, yes, both intravascular and extravascular can have splenomegaly, especially the extravascular. That's fine. Why will intravascular have splenomegaly? Oh, extramedullary hematopoiesis. When the bone marrow realizes that, oh, I'm getting overwhelmed, I have a lot of stuff to do, let's call our friends the extramedullary organs to try to produce some red blood cells. Hepatomegaly, yep. Skeletal changes, yes, from the extramedullary hematopoiesis, the same as thalassemia. Of course, thalassemia will be more severe in the skeletal changes. By the way, why hepatomegaly? Because the liver is working really hard to conjugate this excess of unconjugated bilirubin. Okay, how to read labs. If the haptoglobin is low, there is hemolysis. Boom. Just like that. Haptoglobin low, hemolysis. Especially with the intravascular. Haptoglobin is really low. Maybe extravascular is not that obvious. How about increase unconjugated bilirubin? Both of them. Especially the extravascular. How about increase LDH? Both. Increase your own hemoglobin and hemosiderin. This is uniquely intravascular. It happens in the blood vessel. Hemoglobin escape 
from the blood to the kidney gets excreted and the iron in the hemoglobin hemosiderin. It's uniquely intravascular. Splenomegaly both, especially the extravascular. Okay, labs, are you ready? Yep. How about hemoglobin, normal or low? Hematocrit, normal or low? It's anemia. MCV can be normal, yes, or can be high. Why? You said it's a normocytic anemia. Yeah, but remember when the bone marrow is in a hurry, it secretes larger cells. It does not have any time. Immature cells are larger, so you'll have increased MCV. How about MCH? Can be increased for the exact same reason. Cells are more immature. Reticulocytes increase, of course, both the reticulocyte count and the reticulocyte index. Bilirubin increased, usually the unconjugated bilirubin. LDH high, haptoglobin low. Urobilinogen increase. Why? The liver is working very hard to secrete or to conjugate the unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin. But of course, the rise in the unconjugated bilirubin will be much, much, much higher than the urobilinogen or the conjugated bilirubin. Bone marrow biopsy will yield erythroid hyperplasia, but bone marrow biopsy is not necessary to diagnose hemolytic anemia. Okay, so intravascular and extravascular are similar in a lot of ways. What's different and unique? Splenomegaly, usually extravascular. Unconjugated bilirubin usually goes more with extravascular. Okay, but what's really unique is the hemoglobinuria and the hemosiderinuria. It's uniquely intravascular. If you find them, it's intravascular, boom, and you're done. I'll see you in the next video. We'll discuss the different causes and conditions of normocytic anemia. I'll see you then.